So recently I went to the cinema to watch the new big blockbuster movie Dune. Look at this dude! And it was absolutely amazing. I really liked it. They had a million A-list actors in there. I mean, they even had Aquaman in there. What else do you want? Me and you. You want some muscle? I did? No. Then it was this one shot of this big interstellar spaceship spewing out these little smaller spaceships. Disgusting! And I thought to myself, hey, I probably can do this. And this is the challenge for this video. Can I recreate this one shot out of Dune using Blender? And yeah, what do you guys think? Can it be done? <laughs> <laughs> Write your answer in the comment section right now. Don't skip to the end or you have to subscribe. <laughs> wow, that's the most YouTube thing I've ever said. Let's jump right in. See you in a second. And first of all, we're going to start out by recreating the shape of this main ship. At first I thought I could just start recording and everything would figure itself out basically, but then I realized that some things were a little trickier than others and I had to actually at one point look at another tutorial. Did a little bit of research, watched the tutorial in my own tutorial. But I just still want to include this here because it just shows that sometimes in 3D you gotta try things a couple of times, you gotta figure stuff out to make it work. I'm starting out with the big spaceship first. And the way I start modeling it is by basically just adding a cylinder and then beveling the front of it. And I came across something rather unique and that has to do with applying the scale after you bevel. If I apply the scale first, I get this kind of bevel. But we actually, in this case, don't want to apply the scale because we want that stretch bevel. I continued on modeling the bigger forms of the spaceship, adding a couple of bevels, squishing it slightly, and my favorite, adding some cut lines. Now if you look closely, there are these little ridges and grooves on there. We also have to include that in a model right here, then beveling it as well, two segments, then hitting I to insert once, twice, and also pressing, I hope you can see this, control to push it inwards a little bit, okay, like so, and we got this really nice groove here going around. After I was done with the modeling part, I went out and used every single dirty UV unwrapping trick I knew and yeah this is what happened. And just press U and go to cylinder projection. Disgusting! And we can just change by clicking on the option box how this looks and going to uh, direction and align to object which is pretty neat but yeah it stretches <laughs> stretches beyond the boundaries of the uv map but we don't have to worry about that fortunately because we're going to texture this procedurally now you know why i like procedural textures so much because <laughs> i don't have to mess around with uvs <laughs> And with that, I went and switched to the shader graph and started working on some good old procedural materials. Or as I like to call them, proterials. Anyway, so there was a lot of note making involved and I'm going to include this material and the whole project in the description if you're interested in how I did this exactly. But for now, just know that we eventually reached this point. Oh, that is really close, guys. What do you think? That is... <laughs> that is close. That is kind of close. <laughs> But there is one thing I came across while setting up the lights for this scene that is kind of interesting. 
So I think they cheated here a little bit because they have two light sources. So in the star system we're in, there is only one sun, okay? This whole story takes place around one star. So there is just one light source in the whole system. But you see there is this little sliver of rim light on top of the spaceship and below. So that means they have two light sources in the scene. Which means in conclusion that they sacrificed a little bit of realism to make the shot look better. Think about that. That's a really important lesson to have I think that as long as things look good it's okay to bend the rules a little bit. After I was done setting up the lights, I started modeling the smaller spaceships coming out of the big one. This is extreme gas. I don't know if you're ready for this secret, but our spaceships are just stretched tiny spheres, okay? That are shaded smooth. Really elaborate modeling, I know, but sufficient for our purposes. Yo, purposes. So now let's go to viewport and... So after that I created a particle system to spawn in lots of these small spaceships. After that I used a curve guide to animate them along a path. And after that the thing was basically done and I just had to hit render and wait for the result. So now ladies and gentlemen the final reveal of this challenge. Enjoy! So now let's compare my rendering to the scene from the movie and as you can see there are a couple differences. I think their texturing on the spaceship is a little bit better, a little bit more greeblier, if that's even a word, and yeah, but other than that, I mean if you would sneak into a cinema and cut that part in, I think nobody would notice, would be fine, totally would hold up, so yeah, that was kind of the goal, and yeah. Thank you for watching as always, I hope you liked this, a little bit looser today, a little bit more off the chain, hope you learn something while watching and stay creative. Bye! Oh, I think somebody skipped ahead. I'm afraid you have to subscribe now. Damn the rules! <laughs> <laughs>